We have gathered here today in the sight of God in the presence of these witnesses to share in the joy as Aaron and Chelsea are united in holy matrimony. Marriage was instituted by God when he said, it is not good that man should live alone and God created Eve for Adam. Now, Aaron, I want you to notice that God did not create woman from Adam's foot so he can walk all over. <laughs> And Chelsea, I want you to know that God did not create woman from Adam's head so she can rule over him either, okay? <laughs> God has a perfect plan when he made man and woman to be companions and united together in their marriage. And when he man and a woman marry, they form a new family unit, which is very important to you. The Gospel of Mark puts it this way. From the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. A man and woman marry and leave their respected homes, but they do not leave their relationship with their parents or their families. These relationships take on a great new dimension. So who gives this woman to this man today? Her father. Marriage is a perfect picture of two people sharing life together. Marriage is also a picture of a relationship between Christ and the church. God commanded husbands to love their wives as Christ loved the church. A love that's so great that Christ would even give his life. And so you, Aaron, would give your life for Chelsea. Marriage is a total commitment that you both are making to Christ not to be relinquished except by death. Therefore, it should be entered into very reverently and discreetly and with much prayer. Let us pray. Father, I thank you that you designed male and female to be husband and wife. I thank you, Father, that you put a special relationship between two individuals. And so, Father, today as we come honoring you and what you have designed and created, that you would bless this marriage, you would bless this service, Father, and these commitments that will be made today. And so, Father, we ask your Holy Spirit to be here and move freely upon this place that we might sense your presence and see your smiling face today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, we'll have a reading from... Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm, but how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. From that scripture, when you make God a part of your family, the three cord strand is so strong that it's hard to break. When you're alone, it's easy to break, but when the three together, you two and God, it makes a great marriage. The book of Ruth is one of my favorite passages of scriptures. And uh, the story there is about a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law. But the, the scripture is so good for a husband and wife relationship. And I think you need to apply this to your marriage. It's, Ruth told Naomi these words. And I want you to tell each other these words in the future. Do not urge me to leave you or turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. Thus may the Lord do to me and worse, if anything but death parts you and me. See, a marriage is a companionship which involves mutual commitment and responsibility. You're going to share alike in the responsibilities and the joys of life. When a companion shares a sorrow, it's half because both of you are carrying it together. When it is celebrated in a joyous one, it both of you makes it doubly good because of your relationship with each other. Ecclesiastes was a great portion of scripture that he just read, and it talks about two being together. But God not only built our marriage upon commitment, that we are committed till death do us part, but he also built it upon love. And so in 1 Corinthians 13, he gives us a pure description of what God expects out of the love relationship between the husband and wife. Let me read it, okay? Here it goes. Love is patient. 
Now I could stay there all day, okay? <laughs> but I won't. Love is patient. Love is kind and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. Does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own, is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. That's great. If you can apply this definition to your marriage all the time, and you apply it to your life every day and read the scripture and, and, and practice it, I'm telling you what, your marriage is going to be a great marriage. See, the last verse says, but now faith, you've got to have faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love, loving one another. I want to exhort you today that you would dedicate your home to your Creator, your Savior, your Lord. Take His Word, the Bible, as your guide. Give loyal devotion to His church, which He established for us to go to and, and worship and grow in grace. That we will unite that mighty strength in these two most important institutions, living your life as His willing servant. True happiness will be your temporal and eternal reward. I want you to join right hand. Join your right hands together, all right? Let's receive the vows. Aaron, will you take Chelsea to be your wife? Will you commit to making Christ as the center of your marriage and commit yourself to her happiness and her self-fulfillment as a person and to honor, trust, and serve her in sickness and health, in adversity and prosperity, and to be true and loyal to her so long as you both shall live? Do you give your word? I do. Chelsea, will you take Aaron to be your husband Will you commit to making Christ as the center of your marriage and commit yourself to his happiness and his self-fulfillment as a person to honor, trust, and serve him in sickness and health, in adversity and prosperity, and to be true and loyal to him so long as you both shall live? Do you give your word? I do. I love the rings. <laughs> The rings with that unending circle talks about your love, Aaron, that you're going to love her and it'll never end. That's what that definition in 1 Corinthians 13 is all about. The purity of the metal of the ring shows you that you have a pure love for her and you're going to commit your life to her. And as you place this ring on her finger, on her left hand, would you repeat after me? Chelsea with this ring. Chelsea with this ring. I pledge my life. I pledge my life. And love to you. And love to you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Chelsea, that same thing goes with this ring as you place it on his finger and you committing that your love will always be there, never ending. Repeat after me as you place it on his hand. Aaron with this ring. Aaron, with this ring, I pledge my life. I pledge my life. And love to you. And love to you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Father, as they have made these commitments to you and each other, Father, as they uh, place these rings upon their fingers to be a, every reminder of their love and their commitment today. I pray, God, that you would anoint their hands together as a family. You would unite them spiritually, emotionally, physically, in every aspect of their life, Father. They would be one flesh to bring honor to your holy name. I pray, God, your Holy Spirit upon their family, that you would bless them, and prosper them. And, Father, that you would help them through the tough times and the good times. And, God, I thank you that you have given this couple to each other and their love for you and their love for each other. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Since they have made these commitments before God and these witnesses, by the authority of God and the state of this Alabama, I declare that Aaron and Chelsea are husband and wife, and you may kiss your bride. <laughs> First introduce to you, Mr. and Mrs. Aaron Baldwin. <laughs> Thank you.
to go into the building where they take pictures except for family members. Okay? God bless you. Thank you for being here. That's absolutely right.